Hello, I'm Martin Woodrow. I'm the Chief Executive of the British Dental Association. This is my first update for 2021, so Happy New Year to you. While there is hopefully some light on the horizon, there are also plenty of challenges still to navigate with dental practices remaining open across the UK during the varying lockdown arrangements. We highlighted just a few of those challenges in Parliament this week and I'll update you on those issues next. Yesterday afternoon you may have seen that there was a debate in the House of Commons centred around dentistry and the impact of Covid-19 on dental services. We worked closely with MP for Putney Fleur Anderson to help her secure the debate and 36 MPs came together to call for it to happen. The debate largely focused on the new activity targets and almost unanimously MPs from both sides of the House called for the fourth quarter UDA target to be abandoned. Furthermore, they echoed our calls for support for private practices, business rates relief, funding for ventilation equipment, access to COVID-19 vaccinations, which I'll update on next, and wider reforms on the failed UDA system. This all followed our campaign calling on members to can contact their MPs, which you did in overwhelming numbers, and we want to thank you for your efforts. It proves what we can do when we work together. Unfortunately, Health Minister Jo Churchill refused to abandon the new target. However, she did offer assurances that there's a process in place for exceptional circumstances, such as staff sickness and patient non-attendance. We'll continue to argue with NHS England that the target should be abandoned, and they've at least agreed that it needs to be kept under review. We've seen other governments react to the latest lockdown, with the Scottish Government, for example, delaying the introduction of its new arrangements for three months in recognition of the new constraints, and will continue to seek to hold NHS England to account. We know from our own recent survey work that practices have seen an increase in cancellations or missed appointments since the new year. Furthermore, staff availability is a growing concern, with three quarters of practices citing COVID infection and staff self-isolation as contributors. So it is essential that we have a strong understanding of what exceptional circumstances really mean in this context. We'll continue to press NHS England just for, for just that, as well as for further clarity on what it means for practices who cannot achieve the 45% pre-pandemic activity target that has been set. As ever, we'll continue to update you when we know more. Until then, we'll continue to offer you all the support that we can. Our advisors are taking calls and we have a package of comprehensive advice available on our website, which is linked below. This includes a recording of our webinar on the quarter four targets, which we held just before Christmas. We also have, said, uh, have a side agreement for associates to download and advice around submitting exceptional circumstances claims, among other comprehensive content. So please do take a look at that. I'm pleased to report that across the UK, the picture seems to be improving in relation to dental teams and their access to the COVID-19 vaccinations. NHS England confirmed last week that dental teams are being prioritised for the vaccination, but the message sent out was, please do not contact your GP. You'll be on the list and you'll be contacted by the teams administering the programme. However, private practices, please ensure that your CQC details are up to date to ensure that you are contacted. If you haven't updated your details recently, there's a link to do so below this video. Meanwhile, in Scotland, dental teams have already started to receive the vaccine. And in Northern Ireland, GDPs can now schedule their vaccinations. In Wales, the CDO confirmed that dental teams will be invited to receive the vaccination in the second phase of the rollout as with the other nations of the UK. Whilst it will be a relief that dental teams are beginning to access, access vaccinations, of course, this isn't going to dramatically change the approach to care for the time being. We still don't know if those vaccinated can transmit the virus to others. So it's still important that dentists and dental teams continue to follow the infection control guidance currently in place. Before Christmas, we heard that £450,000 was to be made available by the Welsh Government for funding for ventilation systems. These systems should help to cut fallow time and allow more patients to be seen. The £450,000 will be split across the various health boards in Wales. 
We're waiting to hear more on this and to confirm that all practices will be able to apply, in particular those who have already invested in ventilation upgrades. The Welsh precedent is proving helpful with the Scottish Government accepting yesterday that ventilation is a fundamental part of the Covid armoury, despite recent suggestions that the new Health Minister was unwilling to set aside dedicated funding. During yesterday's press briefing, First Minister Nicola Sturgeon confirmed that she was willing to look into it. We've been pushing all four governments for investment in ventilation and will continue to do so and update you on progress as it unfolds. A reminder to NHS practices in England that the window to claim for PPE reimbursement opens on Monday the 18th of January. According to the guidance, you can claim until the 20th of February, after which time no further claims will be accepted. All claims must be for COVID-19 PPE used in the provision of NHS dental services between the 27th of February and the 31st of December 2020. You can submit your claims via the PPE reimbursement claims form in Compass. Document detailing all the helpful links and information can be found below this video. This morning, the Supreme Court allowed the Financial Conduct Authority's appeal on behalf of business interruption policyholders. In its judgment, the court ruled that cover may be available for partial closures of premises as well as for full closure and for mandatory closure orders that were not legally binding. They also judged that valid claims should not be reduced because the loss would have resulted in any event from the pandemic. This means that more business interruption insurance policyholders may have valid claims and some payouts will be higher. However, it's yet unclear how many dental practices will be covered by this judgment. We're currently in the process of seeking further legal advice on your behalf and we'll update you when we can. Well, that's all from me this week. I'll be back in a few weeks with more news. Until then, I wish you a safe and healthy weekend.